Hey there! Today we will talk about capacitors, and in particular we will see how capacitors behave when connected in parallel, like this, or in series, like this. We will write down some easy formulas to calculate the equivalent capacity of these configurations, and then we will measure it in the lab, the exact value of these capacitors, to verify that the equations that we wrote are correct. Hi there, I am Carlo Carrano, and this is Electronics Engineering Made Easy. Let's start examining how capacitors work when they are connected in parallel. This is a typical parallel connection for two capacitors, C1 and C2. This is the voltage applied to the parallel two capacitors, and these two capacitors would be equivalent to a single capacitor over here. of which we have to determine what the equivalent capacity is. Well, let's start making some observations. In a parallel of several capacitors, two in this case, the voltage V applied to the system is the same across all the capacitors. Each capacitor, however, will have its own amount of charge on its own plates. If you recall from our previous video, a capacitor is defined as a device which has the ratio between the quantity of charge on the plates divided by the voltage at its terminals as a constant. So for the capacitor C1, we have C1 as a certain amount of charge Q1 on its plates divided by the voltage V that we apply over here. For the capacitor C2, we have a different quantity of charge, Q2, but the same voltage. On the equivalent capacity, we will have a quantity of charge which is Q in general, divided by the same V that is over here. And of course this Q it's equal to the sum of the, of the charges on the two capacitors that we have here on the left. So, because of that, let's write down these two equations in terms of quantity of charge. So we can write that Q1 is equal as C1 times V, and Q2 equals as C2 times V. If we put Q1 and Q2 in this equation, we obtain that C1V plus C2V is the amount of charge across the two capacitors. We can write this down as C1 plus C2 times V. And if you compare this equation with this one when we extract the Q value from here, so basically we say that Q equals to C equivalent times V, you can see by comparison that the C equivalent is actually equal to the sum of the single capacities of the capacitors in parallel. More in general, when we talk about N capacitors, then the Equivalent capacities will be the summation of all the capacitances for all the n capacitors. Or, in simpler terms, is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus etc. Let's do now a quick verification to see if our calculations were correct. We have an instrument here which is capable of measuring capacitances. 
And then we have a couple of capacitors and a small breadboard that we will use to connect together the two capacitors. Let's start with the first one. Let's put it on the breadboard and let's measure its actual value. As you can see, we are measuring 29.9 nanofarads. 21.9 nanofarads. Let's do the same with the other capacitor. Let's put it over here. And let's measure it. This one has a capacitance of 6.56 nanofarad. So if we adapt the numbers, we obtain 28.46 nanofarads. Let's see if that is true. Let's put the other capacitor in parallel to the one already on the breadboard. Uh, okay, one and two, there we go. And let's measure the equivalent capacity of the two capacitors. Twenty-eight point forty-five. So as you can see, he is very close. And so we proved our theory. So putting together capacitors in parallel has the effect of adding up the capacitances of each capacitor. Let's now do the case of the capacitors in series. Let's start with two of them, C1 and C2. We apply a voltage between the two ends, which is V between here and here. And this voltage will be divided between the voltages across the capacitance C1, which we call V1, and the voltage across the capacitance C2, which we call V2. One more thing to note is that when we apply this voltage V, there will be some current that circulates across the, the capacitors to basically deposit charges across the um, plates of C1 and the plates of C2. But since the, this is a, a serious circuit, the current has to be the same across the two capacitors. So the same quantity of charge will be deposited on the place of C1 and C2. So we will have a certain amount of Q charges on C1 and the same amount of Q charges on C2. So this time for the capacitor C1, we can write that this value is equals to Q divided by V1. And for C2, we can say that is Q divided by V2, where Q is the same for both. If we consider the equivalent capacitor here, so for this, the C equivalent will be again a Q divided by the whole V, where V is equal to V1 plus V2 from this other circuit. So let's calculate the two voltages across these two capacitors to determine from it by this formula, which is the equivalent capacity of the two capacitors in series. So if we extract V1 from this equation, we find that V1 equals Q over C1. And from here, we see that V2 equals a Q equals to Q over C2. Adding them up, V equals V1 plus V2 equals Q over C1 plus Q over C2. This can be written as V equals Q that multiplies 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. Now, if we take this equation and we rewrite it in such that we, find we determine the V from here, we have V equals 
Q over C equivalent. So you can see, comparing these two equations, this one and this one, that we have already actually found the equivalent capacity. In fact, V is the same, Q is the same, we have 1 over C equivalent that is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And this is, in fact, the formula for the capacitors in series. Again, extending the concept to multiple capacitors, n of them, we can rewrite this like 1 over C equivalent equals summation for i equals 1 to n of 1 over C con i. And this is the general formula for the capacitors in series. Let's try now to verify the case of capacitors in series. Let's start with the first capacitor. Again, let's measure it, just to make sure that we have the right values. So this is 21.91 nanofarads. 21.91 nanofarads. The other one, we put it over here, already in series with the previous one. If we measure this one, its value is 6.56 nanofarad. Now these capacitors are in series, so the equivalent capacity must be equals 1 over 21.91 plus 1 over 6.56. Let's see what this means. I take my calculator. Let me turn it on. So, 21.91 inverse. The other one is 6.56 inverse. Now I add up the, in, the two inverses. And I obtain a value, 1 over C equivalent, equals 198.1 times 3 to the power of minus 3. If I now do the inverse of this quantity, I obtain a C equivalent of 5.048 nanofarad. Let's see if that is true. So let's measure directly the capacity of the series of these two capacitors. There we go. 5.06. So we have measured a 5.06, which is within the approximation of the measurements that we have taken. So as you can see, again, the formula for the capacitance in series is again verified. So when we have multiple capacitors in series, we adapt the inverse of each capacitance, and the result, the inverse of the result, will be the actual capacitance of the equivalent capacity. Before closing, let's now summarize what we have seen in this video. First, we have seen how capacitors in parallel behave like a single capacitor, which has a capacitance equals to the sum of the single capacitors. We have also seen that for capacitors in series, like this, the equivalent capacitance is such that 1 over C equivalent equals 1 over C1 
plus 1 over C2. Or C equivalent is equal to C1 times C2 over C1. C1 plus C2. And this is all for today.